Uh, so, do you guys recall where you left off with? So, we defeated the big we monster thing. Turned off the force field and beat the big boy. Yep, and then I attuned to the device, and then we saw something like up above us, I believe. Um, uh, like in a window, somebody saw something like upstairs somewhere, like watching us or something. Something like that. Exactly. It was kind of sketchy said, either way. Yeah. And we said, Yar, we got to be a killing that thing. And we went charging upstairs. Just kidding, I don't think we got to that part yet. I'll be next time. But <laughs> you get the picture. Be this time. Yeah, that's about where you guys left off. Where's the man? All I see is all the whys. Well, the map's there. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is our map. Okay. Oh, I see. It's all covered in snow. That makes sense. All right. Yeah, I refreshing loaded it. Cool. Okay. So, you guys have had a short rest. Goldstrom has attuned uh, to the giant glowing sphere. And the large skull that you guys saw floating up ahead is floated back into the tower above you. Mm. What would you like to do next? Um, wait for my screen to finish reloading. <laughs> Does anybody have an idea what that thing was that was watching us? I'm not, I, I'm not entirely sure. I did not get a good look at it. Should we, should we go after it or should we just leave? I'm not sure. Perhaps, perhaps leaving it here would be a better plan, but I suppose that... Uh, may not be as dangerous as we, as we think it is. However, whatever it is, it appears to be intelligent in some way. And what exactly did this thing look like? <clears throat> the skull? Yes. Like, do we have a, a better description, or do we have an image of it, or anything like that? Uh, let me see what I got. Ah, yeah, here we go. Hmm. 
Oh. Oh, spooky. Yeah, just a human-sized skull that you saw floating up ahead. You just barely make it out from the distance it was at. A slight smokiness to it. Okay. Um, would my character have any background knowledge of liches? Um, they're making a history or arcana check. Let's say I can probably do the same because I might also. I know my guy uh, wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't make some <laughs> my liches. Yeah, Wayfo, this wouldn't be something that you're familiar with. Uh, Biltrum, uh, it it did seem vaguely lich-like to you. Okay. Hard to tell for sure from the distance and the brevity of the encounter, but you had to guess. <laughs> if I had to guess, it'd be, uh, it'd be the fucker, <laughs> the wall fuckers. <laughs> the <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> So it seems that this may be a lich of some sort, um, and given its location, I can only imagine that um, it is the other presence that I feel is attuned with um, with the device in front of us here, the Aetherin Mythalar. Um, I'm not entirely sure this is a fight that we could win, given that we're in... Um, in the being's uh, lair and in well the center of its uh, you know, power but um, what say you all do you feel like dying in this uh, um, icy uh, snow covered tomb or shall we press on while I do understand your concern I feel that it's not a question of if this is a fight that we wish to have but rather is this a fight that we can afford to avoid true those uh those are um good thoughts may not be able to afford to avoid it um let me try something momentarily um so what i'd like to do is i'd like to try and use the ability that i've gained from attuning with the device to um, cause it to fly, and I'd like it just to try and see what happens if I focus on moving the device, um, the Ethrin Mythalar, which to my understanding would end up moving the rest of the structure if it's even possible at this point in time. Um, yeah, so... Um, you, you attempt to do so, and, uh, you feel the ground about you shake and shift with it. Um, and it shakes for a couple of moments, but it doesn't seem to be moving anywhere. Doesn't it seem to be budgeable, as it were. Yeah, it's stuck where it's at at the moment. Okay. Okay. Well, we can't. We cannot move the site of this of this fight anywhere else, and can't bring Thrun Mithalar with us. So I suppose perhaps the only thing left to do would be to venture back up towards the um, bridge and enter the tower and see what we find. Though perhaps we. Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe searching around the rest of these locations may give us some sort of upper hand, but I suppose it could also end up just costing us more of our more of our time and well-being. It is quite the gamble either way. I Who knows exactly what's in store so. here? This does seem to be the focal point of the city, so if we're going to explore it, we're probably only going to be weaker as time goes on, and more tired. 
Those were my thoughts as well. Fear that um, I am fearful that um, the creatures and other things inhabiting this city may wear us down the longer we're here. So if we do plan to go there, sooner would probably uh, be better than later. Indeed. Yep. While they're talking, Wapo is actually just going to start heading over in that direction. Okay. His his curiosity is is up to eleven currently. So. <laughs> Game is paused. You've been glued to the ground. It's red light Ooh. right now. Okay, what's the name of our compatriot again? I'm spacing all of a sudden. Dritzed. Dritzed, yeah, Dritzed. that's right. <sighs> I'll, um, as Wafo's walking away, I'll say, Well, do you figure that wandering into the, the Lich's lair is the best plan of action, Dritzed? It's not the dumbest thing I've ever done. I'll put it that way. Ah, I see. A Take that how you wish. But, but if you had to rank it... Among would it be would it be among the top five? <laughs> Never mind. Don't answer that. I, I don't <laughs> want to know. I think we should just press on at this point before I, I uh, lose my goal and have to return to the surface. <laughs> See, Wayfo just is. smiles at at Drift's answer, and you actually see him walk with a bit more confidence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's have at it then, I suppose. So as you guys get back over to the uh, pillar with the way up, uh, you see a uh, familiar face there. I don't remember how you got separated. Ah, there's two way foes and two Biltrums. Oh dear God! Let's fix that. Oh. Oh, there's only one. Oh god, I didn't know you guys knew how to <laughs> fucking shadow clone jutsu. Yeah, so you find Tora standing at the base of the tower. Wait, how did you get here? That's a good question. I see I'm not going to get an answer, apparently, to this question. <laughs> Where have you guys been? Are you working with the Lich? No, of course not. <laughs> then why were you here waiting for us? What was taking you guys so long? Where have you been? Where have you guys been? <laughs> we've been um we've been we found playing Drift. sports sports ball with the um with the holograms and um or killing a lot of uh strange creatures that uh, seem to find our presence here disturbing. I've been doing the same. <laughs> Killing a lot of creatures all by myself. Well, that's cool and all, but why weren't you with us? It would have been a lot easier. Well, what he's trying I... to say is he, he's impressed by your, your stamina yes, and um, dexterity. Sure. Sure to that as well. <laughs> okay, whoops. It would be hilarious if the ultimate plot twist is she was actually working with She the is the lich! <laughs> yeah. You caught me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Been planned for forever since the start. <laughs> this is all planned from the beginning to be the final boss. <laughs> Uh, so, you guys climb up the long strut. Uh, near the apex of the strut, the ceiling of the tunnel gives way to a landing that offers a view of the citadel's uppermost reaches. Light from a high window illuminates a set of steps that ascend to a pair of mahogany doors in the tower's face. Well, um, I guess... Wafo will go on up there and 
attempt to open the door. And of course he sees, you know, butt face over here. Hologram don't know, man. Don't, don't know if that's supposed to be or not. Yeah, you, you kind of see someone uh, uh, poking through an overlooking window. Um, you all get a voice telepathically in your head. Uh, just a soft, you should not be here. You should leave. I'm going to think really hard in my head, why not? <laughs> I want to see if it responds. Beautiful. You will disrupt the master's plans. Who, who is this master? I think. I think. Uh, uh, he is master. Uh, Ariel Arthas. Does does that? Can I roll a check to. to See if that name has ever come up in my journey around Ten Towns, or can you just tell me right now if it hasn't? Uh, it would not have come up for you. Who in the hell is I'll, that? I'll ask Professor Scamp if Ero Arthas is someone we should be concerned with. I seem to have records of him being a wizard a long time ago. I'm gonna I'll think to the guy, the, the thing, and how would us being here ruin those plans? Because the master wishes you to not be here. But why? <laughs> that, that is not for me to say. Then what can you say? <laughs> Uh, can I get a it. wisdom saving throw <laughs> from you? Uh, oh my god. Jenkins. Uh, you feel uh, that the being is trying to uh, magically persuade you to leave, but his. Uh, but it doesn't seem to work. Uh, apparently, I'm not as afraid as I thought. I'm warning you, you, you must leave now. Or else what? I'll be forced to destroy you. That seems rude. I'll try and communicate to the guy. Um, can we not just speak with your master? He is not accepting visitors now. You must leave. Well, sure. Except this! I'm gonna start walking in. <laughs> <laughs> um, he will then be uh, leaping from his vantage point to attack. Okay, go ahead and roll initiative. I'm gonna tell it a chupa me pito. Chupa my pito. What? Yeah. Don't ever, don't ever tell me video games don't teach you fun ways to fucking yell at people. I want to tell them to suck my dick in Spanish all I want. Good, yeah. So has he jumped down already? Uh, he will be on his turn. He is. He is where he All is. Right. Hold action to dick punch. <laughs> do it. Do it. So, uh, does it, can I tell, does it look like he's about to jump or is he just kind of standing there still? He, he is, we'll say he's in the process of climbing over the rail to leap down. All right, I'm going to draw my sword and use my bonus action to ignite my rapier and get ready. Like, hold action to attack whenever he gets into range. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Biltrum. actually going to be that strong or not. So. Uh, I guess we'll just hit him with the old more reliable. Uh oh. It says target is blocked by a wall or magic missile. I see him or not? Yeah, I will. He's still up there for the moment, but I will move him out here just so you can target him. I think I rolled the wrong die. Sorry. I was gonna say it should be three D four plus three. Yep, my bad. That's quite all I right. I haven't upgraded uh, the magic <laughs> missile that much yet. So. <laughs> All right, he uh, takes 12 points of damage. Fritz is going to come up. Fritz is going to come up. And make a couple long blue shots. Tor, it is your turn. Okay. I hit him from here. Hmm. I think he's still up on the wall. Yeah. Until he moves, that's why I'm holding action Except away from the jump. For one thing, you are a ninth level monk. Ooh. What's the wall? It's just a flat surface for you to run up. <laughs> Wait, I can do that. You can literally run up the wall and beat the living crap out of him before he even lands. Yeah, I'll do that. Alright, Tor, you begin running up the wall. I'll move him out here just so you can target him. Now he's in me and I am him. Together we are one. We always knew you were the bad guy. And yeah, so you run up the wall, start swinging punches and kicks, and see what you got. That'll hit. Dies. Things fall quiet once again. Well done, Tora. Thank you. So you step inside the spire proper. Uh, the chamber music washes over you as you enter this ballroom. Uh, in contrast to the desolate frozen ruins outside, a dozen people mill around in here, dressed in flowing sil flowing silk garments and holding colorful hand masks and feathered fans. Noble courtiers laugh and gossip as servants move among them, offering sugared treats on silvered platters. 
fancy. It's like a party in here. I wonder what was so wrong with him letting us in to enjoy this. This must be apparitions of some sort. Uh, at one point, a servant hands a uh, holds a, fra uh, a tray in front of you, Jenkins, offering you uh, a snack. I'll eat this. I'll I'll take one and I'll eat it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is it Some good? Not hesitation. Not particularly. Excuse me, server. Uh, you might ask what it what this is. Um. Uh, why, of course, sir. Uh, uh, what you have there is, or uh, they're canapes. Thank you. I will make sure I still eat it all, out of politeness. So I guess actually before I walk off from him, can you tell me where uh, where seems to be all the fun going on right now here? Uh, can't you see we are having a, a fine ball? Well, that is true. I can see that. But I'm wondering if. Uh, Perhaps the, uh, the fun parties have gathered in any certain area. Have you noticed a group of fun people hanging around a certain spot? Oh, I think you will find the finest of the parties right here. I believe that my friend Jenkins is asking where the libations are. And the servant glances about the room. <laughs> you have found them. Wayfo starts looking around for uh, a decanter of something particularly strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, he waves over another servant um, who brings over a uh, uh, a large, uh, opaque, uh, bottle, and a couple of glasses. Nice. Ah. Nice. What is this? <laughs> the finest drink we have to offer. Don't mind if I do. Um, pour some out from the bottle into, into the two glasses. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, they pour it out and it's uh, perfectly clear hmm. uh, no no real smell to it interesting hmm. take a taste take a taste too it's water. They serve mm. you a fancy glass of water. <clears throat> well, I can't argue. It is quite refreshing. This is a most excellent... Looking over at Jenkins. Weak? Most excellent what? Week? Day? <laughs> Month? You know, the vintage of the water. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a, I'm not that big of a water connoisseur. I do not know how finely aged this is. <laughs> but it does hit the spot. 
kind of um, step forward into the room and ask the server, so um, what is this uh, gathering for, may, may I ask? Well, of course, can't you see? It is for the ball. <clears throat> yes, How long is the ball held in honor of? Well, you know, I seem to have forgotten that. I would imagine that that's a very important thing for you to recall, especially if a guest should arrive late and need to have information. Whom may we speak to that might happen to have that information? You know, I'm not entirely sure. It's been so long since we've had a guest. <clears throat> ah, well then you are in a treat. You have five absolutely fantastic guests here. Well, most, most excellent. Uh, enjoy your uh, time here. As he holds out a tray of refreshments once again. Before you go, um, do you by chance happen to remember how long this ball has been in full swing for? You know, I, now that I think about it, I don't remember. See, it must be quite the party then, huh? <laughs> this is one way to put it for sure. Uh, Wayfo, you pop open the door there and you see a, a hallway that leads off around the corner in several ways. Yes. Uh, Wayfo, if nobody else has noticed, has blatantly decided that he is just going to start meandering. And then he's going to lean over the balcony and wave as Dritz goes by. Dritz kind of sighs. Yes, I, I see you. He's Hello. talking to a, a four-year-old who's climbed up on a six-foot-high slide. <laughs> what do I see out I'm going to creak this door open and look. What am I looking at here? Oh, wait. All right. Uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna make sure I hold it like my arms out so nobody can walk <laughs> past me into this room either. All, All right. right. I kind of creak the door. And look. Pause for a moment because we have three seconds we're looking at here. Um, the one that Tora and Wayfo are looking at will. Uh, you see an irregularly shaped room that contains six staffs, uh, stored in racks along the walls with room for more. Ooh. Look! Staffs! Uh, Jenkins. Uh, shifting green, purple, and blue light spills into this room. Through a single window, uh, bolted down tables hold an array of equipment. Uh, beakers of alchemical fluid, uh, alembics, cut crystal needles, surgical tools and coiled leather tubes, and more. Behind this table stands an ornate suit of armor, where the head should be is a swollen human brain floating inside a canister of translucent fluid. Nice. And let's it's see. It's Frankenstein's armor! Kill it! <laughs> you idiot, it's Frankenstein's monster's armor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Uh, uh, Biltrum... Uh, you see a, a seven foot tall, four foot wide window uh, that overlooks a 30 foot wide gap in the spire's structure. A similar window on the far side of the gap. Mm -hmm. 
And this area over here is it like a is it like a, just a drop down to somewhere, or is it kind of like just yep. an open space that you could walk onto? Uh, no, you don't see anything there. Oh. That gap is obviously for the lich to be able to bop in from one location to another, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so Waypo is definitely going to be checking out the stabs and pointing at them with glee uh, with Tora. Yeah, so you have several since, stabs since there. These are, since these are our jam. Uh, there's a straight stick of pale ash with a stern-looking owl's head carved into its top. Um, uh, one of them is a smooth, polished length of blue-tinted wood. Um, has black veins running along through it and an octopus carved into its top. Um, one is made of translucent purple glass, which splits into three branches at the top that circle around one another uh, to form a hollow spiral with an orb of lighter purple glass tucked inside. Uh, another one is carved from golden Lasper wood with carvings of fish swimming upriver along its length. Uh, one seems to be made of weir wood, a hardy substance similar to oak. Its shaft is gnarled and twisted, and its top is carved to resemble a human hand grasping a snake. And the last one is made of shardlin. Uh, and very ornately carved. So, none of these are quarter staff, though. No, am they're I, more the mage staff variety. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, Wayfo's just going to start gathering them all up. <laughs> oh, God. Let me know if he has to actually, like, make any kind of rolls or anything like that. Otherwise, he's just going to collect them in no specific order gather them all up, bundle them up with, like, three very tight uh, wraps around the top, bottom, and middle mm -hmm. so that they're kind of bundled up together. Right. Yeah, nothing seems to happen as you bundle them up, so you have six staves in your possession. Excellent. As I'm looking at them, do they appear to me to be of uh, any particular magical quality, or are they more like focuses? Most of them seem to just be focuses, um... Though, you suspect the one that's made of Shardland could uh... contain some additional effects. I suppose I will leave him well enough alone for now, and... Wei, are you, um, planning on just slinging those to your back and carrying them around, or are we taking them somewhere? Yeah. Ah, so they are... they're now a part of our journey, then, huh? Yeah, Weipo nods happily, having them... having slung them across his shoulder. Uh basically strapping them to his back as he continues <laughs> wandering about. <clears throat> I'll just kind of follow behind them and we can go into this room here if you guys want and see what's up. Yeah, uh, Waypo notices Jenkins with his hand out and is just kind of standing there, like, peering over his shoulder, looking at him, looking out into the room, looking back at him. I think we should probably skip this room. <laughs> Why? They, just, they don't look very friendly in there. Mm -hmm. 
What was it that looked unfriendly? The fact that there's an armor with no head, just a brain. That does not sound like it would be very safe nor sanitary. Precisely, but it doesn't care. It's probably not very safe or sanitary to approach. Hmm. Then it is probably wise for you to avoid going in. And Wayfo just the... shoulders his way <laughs> on into the room. <laughs> That's a better look of what you see standing in the room. Oh, yeah. Um... Wayfo's just going to step in with a hello. The creature starts speaking to you in uh, Loras, the Netherese language. <laughs> the door shut. Did you close the door? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I do not speak your language. Can you adapt and speak mine? Um, uh, the creature continues to talk in Laras, and you don't seem to be able to understand it still. I'm going to shout from the hallway, Way, perhaps! Leave the staves for the giant, and, and we move on for a while and come back. Uh, Wayfo's going to go over, open the door, and, and say, Actually, uh, the professor may be helpful here. It's attempting to speak to me in, in that, that language that the others speak. Ah, good thinking. Professor Scant, is he threatening us, or um, are we okay to stay a while? Um, the professor and the creature exchange a few words in Laras, and um, the professor says, I, I think as long as we don't touch anything in this room and don't act hostily, uh, she won't hurt us. Ah, very well, yes. So, um, way then, uh, let's... Let's make our way elsewhere and see if he's someone who needs more of our attention in the future. Okay, so that begs another question that Wayfo is immediately going to have popping into his mind. What is there in this room to touch? <laughs> yeah, so the, the list of things I read for in Dragon's <clears throat> Open It. Um, uh, bolted down tables, uh, holding an array of equipment, uh, beakers of alchemical fluid, alembics, cut crystal needles, surgical tools, coiled leather tubes, and more. Ah, so truly Frankenstein's lair. Yeah. Sounds like a whole bunch of, of medical stuff. <clears throat> kind of does. Experimental things, maybe? Well, none of that actually sounds like stuff that would catch Wayfo's eye. So, uh, aside from perhaps going over and inspecting the uh, the head of the the thing, that may appear um, hostile to it. Uh, way I should hope not, but just thinking out loud. Do as you wish. Yeah, Weipo is basically like just going to cock his head, looking at this, this fish bowl that the brain's in. How do you see? Uh, professor, could you ask it? How does it see? Uh, so he translates, and uh, one of the creatures says back, I. I have a blind sight ability. It gives me a sufficient glimpse into the world to do what I need to do. Fascinating. 
Who or what made you? Well, I was made uh, as part of a ritual. One that I had performed on myself and that I have performed on others. It's one where I can transfer a being's brain into a jar. They retain their consciousness. And then the jar is attached to... Uh, is this an automaton? In this case, it's a helm tour, but the, the brain not need be attached. It's an independent piece. Ah, so you are separate from the body? Indeed. And the, the brain in its jar pops off and lands in the hands of the body for moments before being returned to the head position. Fascinating. Have you ever seen anything like this, Professor? I've heard... I've heard about it, but I've not extensively studied such a thing. It's quite remarkable. Indeed. And so, basically, Wayfo, with his million and one questions, he's like, so the jar that you keep the brain in, I'm presuming that it is magical and very well guarded. Uh, it is certainly magically maintained, yes. Oh, you mean the fluids and such? Uh, yes. Ah. And, uh, at that point, Weifo is going to tell a professor to quit translating, look over at the rest of the group and go, so if apparently you smack that glass jar, it could most likely shatter. <clears throat> Just a thought. <clears throat> uh, indeed. <laughs> Perhaps good. That that does make sense. Only wondering how strong the magic that holds the jaw to the body is. Mm, that I don't know. Anyway, perhaps we should strategize when he's not here to wonder why we're not being translated anymore, maybe? Um, so the, the creature does speak up and uh, it gets translated. Uh, what brings the group of you here? We have, have not seen a new face in such a long time. He came uh, looking to speak with the master of the house. Oh. I uh, we'll wish you best of luck with that. Um, you'll find him in the upper reaches. Uh, what business do you have, if you don't mind my asking? It has to do with the artifact down below. Ah, I see. You wouldn't happen to know anything about the artifact yourself, would you? Not as much as I would like. My studies have been focused elsewhere. A studious man. It's always good. It's Say, uh, should you be wondering upstairs, if you happen to get your hands on Ariel Larsus's staff, um, I, I could make great use of it, I think. Oh, really? Yes. Can you, just, can you describe it? Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Well, it's a staff, as you might uh, know. Uh, it's a very, compared to many staffs, it's quite plain looking. Long black, a couple of, uh, you know, cube or diamond shapes, depending on how you want to look at it at the top end of it. Sounds most interesting. Real Arthas himself is indeed just a, um, oh, a, f a flying skull nowadays, isn't he? That is the form that he is in, yes. Then I don't see why he would need a staff anymore. Do you? I don't see why he would need it, so perhaps he just left it lying around. Yeah, I think he just doesn't want to get rid of it. You know, maybe work ah. himself a body back up one of these days and be able to use it more, but he won't give it up. But, um, what do you plan to use it for? Something interesting? Chance? <sighs> well... I don't know if you made your way back there or not, but back behind this tower, well, there's a blackstone obelisk. And it's in We've full repair, it but I, yeah, you, you guys probably would have seen it, but I don't think you approached it at all. Uh, it, it's in full repair, but I think if I have the power of the staff, I can fix it and perhaps use its the power of that obelisk to undo some of what's happened around here. In like the um, spell or the, the fact that we're buried underground? Uh, more the buried underground, but eh, maybe there are side effects of that, it's hard to say. Indeed. Oh, Wafo will mention that he will keep an eye out for said staff and uh, bid the brain a good um, day, evening, party, fall, whatever. Yeah. yeah good, good luck finding it. Just head out to the main room, up the little step of stairs, all the way to the back. Keep going to the uh, room, you know, beyond the gap and... You can make your way up from there, I think. Ah, just as I thought. We shall follow just those instructions. Out of curiosity, is there anything about um, real Arthas that we should be aware of? Um, is he particularly upset when unannounced guests arrive? Or um, do, you, do you take kindly to newcomers? Honestly, I wish I could tell you, but we've not had newcomers in such a long time. Don't know how he'll react. Enough. I suppose, um, a surprise never hurt anyone, right? Yeah, as, as, as we're heading out, Wafo will mention mumbling something under his breath about uh, Master Shen's 81st surprise birthday and the fatal heart attack, but... <laughs> 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 well, indeed, I hope that Ariel Arthas is just as um, just as frail and easily surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Wayfo, you've actually found your favorite room here. Um, oh? Uh, yeah, so, uh, as you step into this room, you see several well-dressed revelers milling about, uh, talking loudly to each other, uh, while other servants carry bottles of wine and spirits around to refill their cups. Hey, baby. Uh, behind a rectangular counter, a bald, pale-skinned humanoid serves wine from an ornate bottle. Ooh. Wine. That's nice. Spirits, did you say? 
Yes, spirits. Do the hard stuff. Yeah, Waypo's heading for the hard stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to walk over with him and say, um, I suppose given the circumstances, I'd be remiss if I didn't enjoy one <laughs> potentially last uh, sip of spirit. I'll have a drink with them this time. All right. So the bartender pours a glass for each of you. Uh, you forgot one for Daylar. <laughs> Pointing so, over in the empty air. There's, there's nobody there. Your friend invisible? Just because he's... Just because he's having difficulty being able to imbibe spirits anymore doesn't mean he shouldn't get a share. And as well, it is an open bar. We do prefer to not waste of what we don't need to. It won't be a waste. I will drink it for him. My friend is not just serve it to you. <laughs> Corporally challenged. Corporally challenged. <laughs> and we will um, pour one out, as they say, for the homie. <laughs> I'm just going to leave him with Biltram. Is this not just an elaborate way to say he wants two glasses? No, I, as a matter of fact, I don't think it is. He would just ask for a second if he wanted another one. <sighs> You're probably right. But yeah, you guys enjoy some rather tasty spirits. Mm. Nice. Excellent. Way better than those not tasty spirits. <laughs> than the untasty. <laughs> it's like how I don't like to go to the popular bar. I like to go to the unpopular bar. Right. <laughs> Where they have the untasty spirits. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, yeah, Waypo will take the second drink and, uh, you know, basically give a salute to Daylar. And then take it down the hatch. Since uh, Daylar is acting all weird and won't drink. <laughs> uh, fucking bastard. The bartender leans over to everyone else and is like, is your friend all right? No. He's, he's been through a lot um, in the last month or so. It's try not to encourage it. <laughs> we try not to encourage it, but uh, to discourage it would seem, uh, well, cruel. So. Right, right, well. Fair enough, I suppose. Appreciate your candor. <laughs> A pleasant evening. Listen to the wolves bay. <laughs> well, yeah, Wafer, you step out back into the uh, main uh, foyer and. Dress is like, hey, I think that door across there is the one that we need. And I'm looking at what about a 35 foot jump? Yeah. Uh, how far down is it? Um, let's see. Oh, 
of 60, 70 feet. Okay, is there a ledge on the other side? Because from here it just shows a, a door icon. Uh, yeah, no, no ledge on the other side. And is that actually a door there? E e um, is there a door? Or is it more of a, like a window or, or just an opening? Yeah, let me check for that. I believe it is an actual door there. Okay. Um, in that case, I think Wayfo is going to just have a little fun. And <sighs> he's going to run down the wall. Run say... across. And then I... run straight up. And uh, grab a hold of that doorknob and open it. I, I may be able to be of some service, and I'll um, use Mage Hand. I should be able to open that door with Mage Hand unless it's locked, correct? Uh, yeah. What's your door. range on Mage Hand? Uh, I think it's longer than that. I think it's like up to uh, uh, 30 feet. Oh, yeah, so you're probably just out of reach for this at 35 oh, feet yeah. across. Dang. If I lean out the edge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if it's doable, um, wait, like I said, Wayfo can just run down, run across, run up, and open the door as part of his movement. Um. Let's see. Should be able to. Let me just read over that to double check. Double check that the creator had absolutely no thoughts of monks whatsoever. And it's like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to come up another way. We're pretty funny. But that can totally legit be a thing. Yeah, that or he was planning this one the whole time and he's camping the door and shots <laughs> <even longer>. <laughs> <laughs> he just three sixty no scope. <laughs> Let's see. How much movement do you have? Um, per turn, 45 feet of movement. Okay. Because for that ability to work, you have to start and end a uh, turn's worth of move on level ground, basically. Right, and since it's non-combat, it's 90 feet. Okay. Yeah, and give it a shot. I might make you make a roll for it. But... Okay. I think that's not unreasonable. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that is what my attempt is going to be. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you're just gonna give it a nice, good, as, uh, you know sprint across the whole thing running start sort of thing um literally sprint straight down straight across straight up open the door okay uh can i get a, a dexterity saving throw as you start this all right damn <laughs> <laughs> You were hoping for a new character tonight. <laughs> I was hoping to watch you just face plant into the fucking ground, honestly. <laughs> Slide down and roll. Like... You just start rolling down like Stog the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom! Uh, and no, he doesn't uh, face plant. He catches himself. Damn. On 
the same level that you guys are on. Wait, so yeah. tell me, is he just like face plant into it? Because it doesn't actually have a ground. Or does yeah, he just keep uh, running forward? I, I I made my deck saving throw to not face plant, basically. Yeah. yeah if he <laughs> oh, I see. He, he would have face planted on. Oh, there's like an invisible. Okay. Yeah. yeah there's like a platform here. Man. <laughs> I believe I may have resolved our issue. Nobody has to walk a tightrope. How oh, interesting. Well, that is a lot easier doing this than the tightrope method, so no, I'll take it. I'm going to follow his exact pathway that he took out. Yeah, and you walk across. A little bit daunting being so high up, but... Um, so, you open the door. Uh, yeah, I will, I will basically do that as we're gathered together so that everybody mm -hmm. can be safely across and nobody's going to be stuck in midair. Right. Uh, so... Uh, you look inside, uh, your reflections dance over the mirrored surfaces of this chamber. Eleven alcoves extend from the walls like the points of a star, each one narrowing to a niche where a gently uh, glowing crystal is mounted five feet above the floor. The air seems to hum with pent-up energy. Fascinating. I have the power! I Castle Grayskull. Yeah. Just <laughs> nobody? Okay. Oh no, I got it. It was definitely <laughs> He-Man, for sure. <laughs> um well I think we should go check out these crystals. Oh uh, yeah. As you guys begin standing about the room, uh suddenly the crystals brighten as rays of energy burst forth one by one to converge in the center of the room. As more of the race intersect, a translucent figure comes into view where their light converges. A bald man wearing a long purple gown. Uh, his face breaks into a smile as he sees you. Hello. But Hello. Respect. This time speaking fluently as you, in the same language you spoke to him in. Finally. <laughs> it is a pleasure Damn. to make your acquaintance. I am Wei Po. I am Everlast. I believe Everlast. we've met your cousin Duracell. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, he has red hair, copper top. Oh my god. <laughs> Dang. But Everlast, are you the master of this house? Uh, no, no, I am not. I was created by the master as an assistant. And you are um, imbued into these crystals around the room, by chance? Uh, yeah, they are part of uh, what powers me, though. I am not limited to just this room. I see. Where is your master right now? He's further up in the tower. That's where he usually is. How do we get up there? Oh, well, you have to go up. Waypo looks up towards the ceiling. Right, give me a perception check. Yeah, you see a ceiling about 30 feet up. Waypo just kind of cocks his head slightly. I only see a ceiling. Yes, that is, that is the way up. Uh, Waypo will jump up towards the ceiling. <laughs> I 
Um, so, as you uh, wed yourself up there on some of the walls, uh, you see that there's a hatch in the ceiling up there. Ah. Unexpected. Is it close enough to a wall that I can wall climb up and get to the hatch? Um. Yeah, you could probably reach it from uh, one of the spots you're at. A little bit of stretching involved, but certainly within your capability. Run up, dexterous grab. Ugh. Turn back to Everlast and say, Everlast, um, you are your master's assistant. Could you perhaps tell us how um, say, uh, Miss Please, um, the master would be with uninvited guests. Uh, he generally does not like to be disturbed by those who do not have good business with him. But, um, what keeps him so preoccupied all this time? Eternal life, obviously. Uh, I believe he is uh, searching for ways to repair the city. That is all on that I'm allowed to say. See. Well, I suppose we, we could find a way to help him with that. Well, many powerful minds have tried. Ah, huh. that's where the problem lies. They were powerful minds. Yep, they didn't try any unpowerful minds. Yeah, wait till they get a load of us. Yeah. We'll show them. <laughs> we'll show them all. The last, is this the quickest way up and back out? Should we um, find ourselves leaving in a hurry? Or is there a better way to exit the tower? Uh, no, this this is the best way. Very well. Not sure if I trust this guy or not, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All of the wizards use this way. Just it? I suppose that's because um, the magical path that uh, we we can still use on the way back out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it won't have vanished at all, you know, after everything <laughs> else happens. Totally. It'll be fine. Say, so, maybe I'll walk back over to the door real quick and just check and see if it's, uh, if it's still firm over there or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still firm. Hey, what a deal. All right, well, fuck it. Totally not going to be a trap or anything. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so, uh, Wayfo gives a knock on the hatch on the ceiling and it opens up, revealing about a 20 foot tunnel to a uh, room up above. Yeah, and as I had typed off there, uh, Wayfo is going to uh, tie off a rope around his waist and lower it for everyone else to climb up. And is everyone else going to do that? Sure. I guess. <laughs> all right, so... It's the worst that could happen. Uh, we could all die a horrible death, <laughs> and... Then be trapped here oh, the for other eternity. One. Being a blade of disaster. 
Uh, so. This is a disaster! <laughs> uh, it's a trap. So, you guys uh, climb up. You ascend into an oval hall of glitter, glittering with frost. Uh, carvings decorate the walls, and long icicles hang from the ceiling. A ten-foot radius dome of translucent ice encloses the area around the shaft from which you emerge. Uh, at the far end of the hall, two blade-shaped patches of pitch darkness hover in the air uh, to the other side of a double door. Glowing green crystal, roughly the size of a human fist, is set into the arch above the doorway. Ooh. Daylar says he would like to get the gem. I, <laughs> I'm oh, sure he does. Oh, of course, yeah, I was just about to say. Um, I was just about to say, perhaps instead of charging through this door, it may be, I hate to say this after coming all this way, it may be beneficial if we spend perhaps in an evening or a time of rest to recuperate, and perhaps it would be wise Something that I should have thought of earlier, but perhaps it would be wise if the rest of you um, attempted to attune to the orb down beneath this tower. I have a feeling that it may become important in the near future. I would hate to be the only one capable of interacting with it if we should, uh, well, if ill times should befall us. Really? Like, now's the time that you come up with this? It's never, too, it's never too late to take the keys out of the drunk man's hand, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, it's also never too late to just floor it. After you wrap the car around the telephone pole, that's a little too late. I'm just saying. It's, it's, never, too, it's never too late. I mean, obviously, it would have been better if it was done before, but... Yeah, Hold on, we... I think I've got a tampon somewhere here, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tori, you got any? <laughs> I think Belgium needs one right now. <laughs> you all feel strongly that we, don't, that we don't need to. We can, I suppose, we could press I, on. But... Honestly, I don't feel like this is a, a necessarily bad idea. I would, however, perhaps recommend, like, a wisdom save for Beltram so that we actually have done this already prior to getting all the way over here to the tower. I mean, yeah. Just data sex machina in a little bit, you know? So we're gonna actually spend like the 20 minutes to go down and do it. <laughs> exactly. And we'll still probably have to do the rolls and all that stuff, but I'm just like, let's retcon this shit. If Colin's cool with it, he can always just say, you, know, you guys are gonna have to go down there and then you're gonna get trapped and then you're gonna die in the way, but. <laughs> Fuck exactly. you. <laughs> I have 72 ghouls surrounding it right now. You're gonna have to fight them all if you wanna attack. <laughs> yeah, it's already, we've already sent over another one of those giant beasts from the last session to guard it again. <laughs> we sent over his whole family this time. Right, right, right. Now he used to say that his whole family's not been there this whole time waiting for the next person to attune. You get, one, you get one one monster per attunement. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, you don't know. Maybe demand sacrifices. And last time we sacrificed the monster because it happened to be there. Right. Maybe we just got lucky. Could be that too. However, I don't know about the rest of you guys. I was also just talking about the concept of a long rest because. Oh yeah. If we're about no. to walk into a boss room. Not be the most prepared. It is but... not the worst idea I have heard. I, I would agree that it's definitely not the worst thing I've heard. But that, that's up to Colin if we can retcon some of this shit. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think when the last time you guys had a long rest was. It's been a while since it's... we just did. Uh, we did short rests enough. That I have actually run out of hit dice. Yeah, it's been a hot minute since we long rested. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, we'll say it's been long enough. Um, I don't know that I'll retcon it into the past, but I'll say you guys can climb back down to the floor below. Or it's relatively safe if you want to. And This is effectively a... Uh... Okay. We've we've just completed a scouting mission and now we're heading back down, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So go ahead, take your long rest. I mean, personally, I feel like we should just go down to the room with the hook har and <laughs> the 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 the, jar, the brain in the jar and take our long rest there. Yeah. I mean, probably good. You, you know. We're not going to be doing anything violent against him, so... Either way. Four hit dice. Yay. This is... This. My only suggestion for the going, going all the way back down was to do both, but yeah, if you think that um, it would be prudent to go to the... Um, room with uh, whatever it was the Devarath or thing well I That's think we good. I think we do need to go all the way back to the to the whatchamacallit thing and everybody attuned to it I, I think that's not a bad idea at all I'm just saying it's like if we're in desperate need of a long rest we could do we it there, there and, go there, yeah. and then head over there just in case some more yeah, shit decides yeah. to hit the fan they're fair works for me and yeah. I will be right back. I've got to run down and grab some water, but I am all for doing the attuning. And yeah, since, I'm down since to I've that. got to go grab water and everything, I can go last. I'll go first and do a tune. I just made a bunch of work for you. Just <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just reading up on a few things right quick to make sure I have everything. To be in fair, order. if the DM doesn't have at least one major curveball thrown every session, are we doing it right? <laughs> no. I feel like that's part of the fun is making him have to uh, figure things out too, like we are. Because <laughs> yeah, if we just if we just walk into it and just spring the trap exactly as planned, it gets boring. You know? Exactly. Yeah, I gotta keep it fresh for everybody. <laughs> This is Biltrum's. This is Biltrum's uh, personality. He gets into stuff, and he's like, "Well, perhaps if we had more time to think about this, it'd be easier." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jenkins, would you like to touch it while you're tuning to it? Is there any reason to um, believe I should not? I would. I would have hoped that I would have <laughs> advised them about uh, my feelings about these subjects before uh, putting them attuned. I can't remember, do you say that it was a really bad idea? Yeah, that's what I said last session. <laughs> Just a, a little bit. Uh, uh, you, fuck it, I don't remember what he said, oh, I might touch God. it. No. I don't remember what he said. I, no. I don't to it, you know, I'll, I'll, I don't know, I'm not too used to attuning the weapons, I've done it a couple times. Usually I gotta touch it to do that, I don't remember him saying anything safety related about Jesus it. Jesus Christ, I'm pretty sure you're dead. <laughs> Yeah, touching it is like a uh, new character. Um. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I would have hoped I would have stressed the matter, but I guess <laughs> the dice are the dice, so I guess if that's how Unless you're going to stop, unless you're going to really grab my hand while I'm reaching okay, out about, for it. How about this? How about this? Uh, he's there looking at it, and I'm just hanging out. and uh, Like bodyguarding it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I was about to say, I'm hanging out, and we'll see if I can, um, which one do I want to roll? Let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not fast enough to stop him, I guess. <laughs> I already lost a dick, do I lose a hand now? Uh, I'm not fast serious? enough to stop him physically, so I'll let him decide whether or not his character are, are, are you, is, okay, uh, Are you seriously climbing up to touch it? I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I, did, I rolled the Did Bilchum at least yell at me to not touch it while I was going to touch it? That's fine. I, I will I will be yelling at you as I fail to jump to knock your hand out of the way. 
Quick uh, I'll look my what? <laughs> the sound is enough. Don't. <laughs> no hands. Oh. Please no hands. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. I forgot. <laughs> If he said something, I would stop to listen to him, but if he didn't say anything, he just face planted, I would have gone for it. <laughs> Alright, he at least said something. It's, it's, uh, we'll, we'll consider it a burn that's um, akin to that of the sun, so oh. be no touching. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright, I'll, uh, I'll tune without touching it. <laughs> it's probably for the best. On just he just had to ask you because he knew what you'd say. Um, I mean, to be yeah. fair, I'm like what I remember, you know, I don't, I, I don't remember. Let's don't see if he remembers. So. <laughs> uh, just for reference, if you touch the, the the big, uh, you know, bright globe, it's a DC con twenty two Constitution saving throw. Or the uh, the sad part is is that this entire time Wayfo is going, I've never touched a sun before. <laughs> um, if you fail the save, it's full damage. If you succeed, it's half damage. This is the damage roll for touching oh. it. So technically, if I saved it, I would live. No. Oh wait, no, I'd be still over. That's over full health bar. Damn. <laughs> um, if if I got lucky and it rolled poorly, I might live. Six, yeah, six it's a, a very if, if I, that was a there. that was a pretty average roll. Yeah, yeah. one point under average actually. Mm. Yeah, it, it's basically an assured death if you touch it. Oh, he'll figure that out once he finishes the tuning, I suppose. <laughs> 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 and after I yelled at him. I'm going to step away for a moment while everybody else attends and go get a drink. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Jenkins, you attuned to the Mithalar. Sweet. Oh, touching uh, it really would have been that bad of an idea. <laughs> yeah, as Wait soon as your tune finishes, you realize how bad of an idea it was. <laughs> realize I would have actually been vaporized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Wayfo will happily uh, attune. Does Wayfo right. touch it? <laughs> Wayfo is, is actually quite uh, tempted. To touch it because, like I said, he's never touched a sun before. Mm -hmm. But uh, Biltrum's admonitions of "Do not touch the big shiny orb" is kind of enough for him to be like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Biltrum yelling at you to not touch the orb. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, so you attune to it as well. Uh, Tora, are you wanting to attune, attune to the big shiny fiery ball in the middle of the necropolis? Yes. It's shiny. All right, so Tora, you use part of the rest to attune to it as well. Um, at, and then Dritz is like, well... Yes, I got nothing else to lose. He sits down to attune to it. And then it blows up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Too many quite. people have attuned to it. You all die. We're sorry, yeah. your attunement cannot be completed as dialed. Oh god. The last That's one there is actually sign. quite accurate. Uh, Dritz gets done attempting to attune to it and is like, I don't think that one worked for me. Wonder if we've reached the max number of individuals to attune. It feels like it's more in the range of seven to ten, perhaps, people that can be attuned. 
or perhaps it is that Driss has enough items that he cannot attune to anything else. Oh, no, it's not that. It I'm, I'm good there. I wouldn't have tried if I had too many. Well, I must say that when... I'm sure you all feel the same, but when I first attuned to Ethereum Mythalar, I could tell, being the only one of our group, that someone else outside of our group was still attuned to it, so I feel that in some ways this is perhaps the source of Erythalas's um, power. Oh, I suppose the main concern I had was whether or not the would be sharing the power with him, or perhaps slowing him down if we were also attuned to it. I figured maybe it would help. I can't imagine it hurting us too much. Probably only has more upsides. So, you guys finish up the remainder of your long rest. You're all feeling nice and refreshed. Um, so, are you heading back to where you were before your rest, or...? You yes, better? indeed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, change my mind. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know what? On second thought, let's just leave and go back to the surface, honestly. I mean, we're attuned. That's all we really want to do. <laughs> Um, so, you guys walk past the still ongoing uh, ballroom, um, climb back up the uh, the shaft, and um, you're back in this room. There's the uh, icy dome surrounding the uh, section that you emerged from. Um... Waifo is going to head over towards the double doors. Basically seeing at what point these uh, shadow blades decide that they want to start maneuvering towards us or uh, obstruct us. Well, that's about as far as you can get right there before the icy dome surrounding the hole you climbed up through stops you. So it is a transparent or translucent dome around us? Yep, 10 foot radius dome of translucent ice and closes the area around the shaft from which you emerged. This seems like it might be extremely difficult to punch, get through. Um, your hand hurts. Wait, who gives a double blink? A double blink. <sighs> yes, it appears the uh, the ice here is made of ice. <laughs> uh, upon it closer appears infection, to be made out of something much stronger than ice. Uh, yes. There's a bit more to it than just ice upon closer inspection. What is it, like magical ice? Is it like ice ice, baby? Hey, that the ice is three foot thick, it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be pretty stiff. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be that thick. An inch or two maybe. But it held Wayfo's punch as if it was nothing. Perhaps if you cast Fireball, it will melt. <laughs> great idea. Cast Fireball and just it, it lights the whole room ablaze. <laughs> we all it's immediately all take max damage. All right. No attempt to dodge. I just go ahead and choose to fail the dexterity saving throw. <laughs> we won't be doing that, but good idea. 
where your head's at, Chief. It was, it was the thought that counts. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, maybe some sort of firebase fell. <sighs> um, I could try... I could try and put a... Fucking taps freezing. Try and just drop a firebolt over here on the wall and see if it actually has any sort of melt. I guess I could throw it. Uh, yeah, so you see the some ice on the outside of the no, actually no, that wouldn't even do that. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to have any effect. Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps it must be hotter than the measly firebolt can conjure, but I'm afraid that uh, attempt burning hands. Um, I suppose maybe if everyone stands back against one corner, that shouldn't hurt everyone. Just review, uh, remove a few of the hairs from your arm. <laughs> yep, we'll uh, we'll hang back, see what happens. Yep, we'll see what happens. What happens. All right, so I'll kind of just like stand up at the front of the group and make sure everybody's behind me. <clears throat> I'll hit it with the old burning hands. All right. Uh, so it puts on a fantastical show before you, uh, you know, tracking around the inside of the dome. Um, it's cool. Almost around to people's backs. <laughs> um, uh, well, once the flame and the smoke settles, uh, the dome's still there. Uh, Waypo is going to take the, uh, the stabs off of his back. I was just about to say the same thing. And um, he's going to basically like try to tap each one on the ice dome and see if any of them happen to have any kind of effect or pass through or etc. Alright. Uh, yeah, so as you do so, you take out one of the stabs and Give it a gentle tap on the dome, and the dome dissipates. <laughs> nice. Oh! Sweet, like puppies in the morning. So, um, yeah, with the stabs. Um, and it's heading you on barely up. step outside of the range of the dome before the uh, large shadowy blades by the door. Uh, move towards you and begin to attack. Yo, bitch, I got a staff. What's your problem? I'm supposed to be here, man. I don't know this bitch. <laughs> Out of curiosity, just for my own uh, tracking of what we're doing, which which staff was it that opened it? The Shardolin staff? Um. Something else. Uh, Wayfo, unless you picked one specifically, roll me a d6. Um, I did not pick a specific one. Uh, he did it with staff three, the purple glass staff. Glass. Pimp staff. <laughs> 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 the purple dildo of plus one. Let's <laughs> get yeah, that. There we are.
the blade comes flying forward. Instantly kills Jenkins. <laughs> Blast! Okay. <laughs> Guys, yeah, this will be fun. Uh, so uh, it uh, just rolls up on. That was not supposed to happen. Oh dear God! I got one <laughs> shot. Oh my <laughs> God! It not it not only found my heart, but it found all seven of my hearts in one kill. <laughs> one hit. Oh my God! It was not supposed to roll that large number of dice, but it, it tries to attack you with a 9 and misses. Oh, thank god I missed a 74 damage. <laughs> Wayfo? Um, well, I suppose I'm just going to maneuver around this thing. Okay. Uh, get some advantage here, and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I say we beat the crap out of the blade. Good Kick him in the dick. I mean, the the pommel or something. The hilt. <laughs> That'll hit. And I will <laughs> use one key point for flurry of blows. Okay. Oh, that's a hit here. And I don't know if this will actually work or not, but I will actually spend one key point to make that a stunning strike as I finish this thing off with the next strike. So yeah, I don't know if it'll be affected by a stunning strike, but I've made one of them a stunning strike. Let's see. It's a shot. That's a constitution saving throw? Uh, yes. It fails that. And stunned is one of the few conditions that can affect it. Oh my e god. How did yeah, you do that? Oh. Uh, yeah, I so... mean, you just gotta hit it in the deck. Right. Makes sense now. I'm not familiar with sword anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the sexual reproductive organs of this sword? <laughs> it's also known as the shaft. <laughs> Duh, of course it is. I'm it idiot. all makes sense now. <laughs> this is why I failed out of my uh, fucking fighting school. Right. Jenkins. Alrighty. Um. Since I'm already up close and personal, I guess I'll use my bonus action to ignite my sword, and then uh, I guess I'll cut the sword with my sword. Doing a little sword fight in there, are you, pal? Uh, you can say that. That is a hit. Nice. If I heat it up enough, maybe it'll start to bend. 
Send it like Beckham. <laughs> Alright, that's it for my turn. Okay, so next up. Uh, Trist is up. He's going to come up. That misses. Well, that also misses. Damn. So much for being my hero. Some hero the, this guy is. Freaking loser. Closer target. Yeah. Oh, that was a 50 50 die. Was that one or two? It's a coin. It's a 50 yeah. <laughs> I believe it's called a coin. Oh my god, that was his turn. Ignore the D12s. Oh, oh, I didn't even hit. Oh, 52 force damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, so actually, since that he rolled a 19, that's a critical hit for this uh, enemy. Which means, Wayfo, you take 52 points of damage. Ow! Wait. I have 23 remaining. Holy shnikes. Viltrum. In the showbiz call, not good. No. Nah, not good at all, home. Well, I guess I'll do what I always do, I suppose. Um, put some stank on it. Oh, I must. So I must. Um. <clears throat> um yeah, sure. Fourth level on that fight. Cast spell. Browser for some reason is being super slow right now, so I could see those die roll out there. I just saw the number pop up, so hopefully That's it did, all right. did what it's uh, supposed to. 18 points of damage. That one does. And then I'm gonna do flurry of blows on this guy. Okay. You can also burn a key and make your last hit a stunning strike if you want it. That's Shut what I did to the one up above, so it won't <laughs> get a turn. Yeah, Stun swords. Alright. Constitution saving throw coming right up. Not enough. No, that is not enough. Now this fellow is... 
is also stunned. You may have just saved us from a party wipe. Yeah, baby. Nice job. Twa. Uh, so... This creature is stunned. Wayfo. Uh, I think it's going to be rinse and repeat. Nice. Right in the crit. Seek. That's 10 points of damage. <clears throat> Not a crit, but another very nice roll. Nine damage. That dang thing is still alive. Some did. <laughs> All right, using the last one from Flurry of Blows. Oh yeah, that's gonna do it. Peace. That living blade of disaster is now a dead blade of disaster. I am going to uh, maneuver to give, oh, yeah. uh, if I can. There we go. Yeah. To give at least three other people the chance for advantage if they needed it. <laughs> oh, it's stunned right now, so they've got advantage anyway. Yeah, but this way they get extra advantage. Yeah, doubles, right? Double binge. Nice hit from Jenkins. Kurtz is gonna come up. <clears throat> I'm gonna try that again. Kurtz is gonna come up. And just barely kills it. Wayfo slides down along the side of the wall, leaking profusely. Those were quite the um, intimidating pieces of magical uh, defense, weren't they? Quite lethal. Imagine we'd have some time to take a moment and collect ourselves here. Yeah, Waypo may need more than just a short rest. Cast some uh, cure wounds on you. <clears throat> uh, how much was that? There we go. Nineteen looks like. Ooh. Ooh. Well, that was definitely not bad. Hey, two points away. Nice. Looking a lot better now. Oh yeah. Yeek. Uh, so check out these uh, these blades of disaster. But 
are they like now that they are inert? Um. Are they still swingable? <laughs> they are non-existent. Yeah, I figured they were conjured. Yeah, they were magical forces. Okay. So. Worth a look. Yeah, two doors. The double doors there at the bottom. Standing before <clears> you. <throat> and who knows what waits beyond. Oh, shoot. You know what? I... Um, so... Uh, Wayfo, as you step into the hallway here, you seem to have walked into a, a magical trap. Uh, oh, I need a... Let me pull up my information for that. I need a... a constitution saving throw. Uh, you begin to uh, stiffen up a little bit. Why is he walking like that? Bud? Uh, you also see he is beginning to change his not just color, but his skin's texture is changing. My metal is looking different? Can I tell, like, what he's turning into at all? Uh, not so much your metal, more the fleshy parts of you. Wait, Warforged have fleshy parts? Yes. I believe so. This is news to me. <laughs> uh, couldn't be. We've been over that before. Well, he has uh, relearned it then. Only using the machinery parts, I guess, for combat, <laughs> so he didn't have to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about the fleshy bits. <laughs> uh, Tora, can I also get a constitution saving throw? Tora, you're fine. So, Tora, do you feel anything different? Feel fine. Um, What's Wei Fo doing then? Is he just playing a joke? Maybe you got you come, you come in. I'll go through. <laughs> Um, no, you actually you do. Damn it. <laughs> okay, Jenkins, you, you have failed your save. Um, you... Um, you, you start to stiffen up and not feel quite right. Um, and just because I look up, I'm going to slightly retcon. Um, you don't... Wayfo, as a Warforged, you don't have flesh. You have organic matter on you, but it's more like roots and stuff rather than you know, flesh. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, I, it's, I, it, it, I, it's more like the internal squishy parts from what I had understood. The things that, that make them m movable and such. Maybe if I cast Fireball on us all, it'll fix it. Um, Not a bad <clears> idea. Yeah, I think what I am going to do, though, is going to cast Dispel Magic on a foe as level 5 to see if that fixes it. And if not, then I'll attempt to make my ability check to see if I can uh, reverse it. But we'll cast it first at level 5 and see what happens. So I 
somehow not able to see. I don't know if it's because of the door or because Wayfo's around the corner, but it's not letting me cast it on him right now. But. Oh, yeah. I'm around the corner. There you go. Make sure I can see you. I don't know what the <clears throat> level of the spell is, but I cast it, uh, the spell magic at level 5. So. Uh, the, the trap's spell is a 6 level spell, so... Okay, uh, so then could I attempt to make the DC check? Yeah, the... you need a 16 with your spell casting ability. It would be intelligence. Okay. Maybe. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I was going to say, though, if you're going up against its DC, does it affect anything if you're casting it at a higher level? No. But he didn't know which level it was at. Yeah. He was hoping to get the automatic cancellation if it was fifth yeah. or lower. Yeah. Of course, when I was just a little bit higher level of a wizard, then we could have done it. Oh, whatever. We'll just fucking step in here and do the save and see what happens. If we all die. So I'm dying too. We're all gonna die a slow, painful death here. <laughs> I feel it's the only way to go. Yeah, it makes sense. Be able to move still like this, though? Uh, for the time being. Thanks. Um, I wanna use my time to walk back out of the room and see if the effect ends. Uh, no, it does not end. Damn it! Bobby. <laughs> and now you've triggered the trap twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double the effect. Now you're twice as slow. Um, yeah, rereading some stuff. Wayfo, you actually wouldn't have been affected by that at all. The trap would oh, okay. have ignored you. Um, it would have triggered for the next three of you, and then after that, its charges were used up and Jerks walked by unharmed. <laughs> You're be fucking kidding me. <laughs> I would have let Dritz go first. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, just That's had to say the words. That's nature. <laughs> um, so, two of you are still under the effect of the trap. Can you make another constitution saving throw, Jenkins and Biltram? Must resist urge to be too stiff. Uh, Biltrum, you succeed on that one. Uh, Jenkins, you did not. Ah! 16? Holy shit. I guess I could try the spell again. I'm gonna have to try and... Um... Can do the... Do the ability check. Yeah. Cast it at a regular third level, and then I gotta do this guy over here. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah, yeah, there she yeah. is. Alright, so that was on Jenkins. Yeah, because he should be the last one affected by it, I think, right? Yeah, so Jenkins, you feel the magic dissipating before you got too stiff. Oh, thank God. Got your new pair of shoes there, bud. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh,. Biltrum, roll me another constitution saving throw. God damn it. <laughs> you're not cured, you're just able to survive for just now. Just still fighting it. Oh, that is a failure. Okay. Well, I guess do I need to fucking cast this on myself now? <laughs> 
I don't think that's a bad idea. No telling what this uh, crap could do. Fucking dice, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, give me another constitution saving throw. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Two twos in a row, dude. That's that's rough. Yeah, you're you're definitely getting that's very horrible. stiff now. You still can move, right. but perhaps not for much longer. One more time. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is cool. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of my third level spells. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Bill, Tim, you, okay. as you cast that, you notice chunks of stone fall off of your skin. Dang. Ooh. Uh, you were one save away from being turned into stone. Oh, my. I feel like that, that would not have good. been ending well. Yeah. Probably not. It's pretty spooky. So, now... <laughs> Um, you find yourselves yeah, so in the let's... room. Uh, oh, lining the far wall of this hall are eight doors, each marked with a different arcane symbol. Uh, on the wall above them uh, is etched an ins inscription in Draconic. Ooh. What's the one above where I'm standing say? It says, this is not a restroom. Quit shitting in here. <laughs> Oh. Wait, um, can Warforge take a dump? <laughs> <laughs> you you open the door and it's just all poop. You're like, oh my god! <laughs> Who would do this? this? Sludge monster! No. <laughs> um, do you speak draconic or read draconic? Uh, Wayfo does not, but I am fairly certain that one of us does. Which is why we um, say it out loud. Can, yeah, I was about to say, I can cast fucking Comprehend Languages and just read them all real quick. Or maybe okay. the professor already knows Draconic? Yeah, I guess that's true. Save us Professor spell. Scant, let's get up here, bud. Go on. Uh, let's see. Where is that? that professor Scant somewhere? What does Professor Scant know? He can read Wait, Draconic. He... Yeah, that so is clearly he knows it's... everything. That's why we keep him along. <laughs> right? uh, so, uh, the inscription above the doors reads, Speak thy master's name and enter. Arthas. Speak your master's name? I assumed that it was um, in regards to uh, the master of the tower, the real Arthas, but I suppose I could be wrong. What do the other doors say? Or are they all the same? Uh, there's just a single inscription. Uh, it's the same for all of them. The symbol on the door is different for each of them. Oh. Professor Scant, what do the symbols mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me everything, please. <laughs> uh, go ahead and anyone who would like to make an arcana check. Well, I'm standing in front of a door, so I will totally get a nat <laughs> 20 on my lousiest nice. ability. I'm going to do, do another one just to see if we can get higher. Oh my god. That 20 is pretty perfect, but... Uh, yeah, so... You guys recognize these pretty much straight Still away. Like... Uh, <laughs> these symbols, uh, represent the, uh, schools of magic. Ah. Abjuration, conjuration, divination, and so on. Uh, so which one am I standing in front of currently? Um... 
That would be the um, evocation door. Okay, so Wepo is going to speak his own name and open the door. All right, uh, you speak your name and open the door, and beyond is just blackness. Uh, Wepo shuts the door. Well, that's <laughs> odd. <laughs> Does somebody else want to try? You said it, uh, it's something to say the name of like who we serve or something like that? Uh, the inscription reads, Speak thy master's name and enter. Master's. Kins walks up, see, and then it opens. <laughs> <laughs> I have no master, and I'll try opening this door. Uh, you are met with just blackness beyond. Can I take, Perhaps. like, a copper piece and, like, just flick it into there? Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Is there, like, a void where it just keeps going down, or is there, like, a floor there? Uh, no, you hear the sound of a copper piece, you know, clink on the floor. Um... But he can't see it? No. Creepy. Perhaps I'm gonna light my rapier, and I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look inside and see if it's like, is it just poorly lit, or is it literally a full black void magic? Uh, it seems to be magical darkness. Oh, I'm gonna close the door then. Um, I'm gonna say, um, Realarthus, and then open this door. And there's a party inside. <laughs> With booze. Yay. Um, I believe I've uh, found the correct door, or said the correct word. Or both. Well, since you did that, it's only fitting that you lead the way. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, you step through and you see a vortex of glowing stars hanging from the ceiling, or hanging in the air inside this chamber, slowly rotating on its axis. As the constellations move, they cast radiant starlight across the walls. Eight high-backed chairs, each bearing a different arcane symbol, face the starry miasma. Huh. Pretty. Um... You said this this door was um, evocation. It was the sign over this door? Or was it uh, that one was illusion. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So peculiar. There's another set of doors down here. Well, let's see. That room there, way foe. Yes. Uh, there are things in the side rooms. The uh, I did the circle one first. If yeah. You want to go back. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, the, the circle one, uh, you see a, sten a ten foot tall spindle of gray stone hovering upright, rotating slowly inside this circular chamber. All around it, the surfaces of the room's walls are cracked, as though some terrible energy once coursed through them. Wow. Neat. And over in this other one? Yes. Let's see. Uh, the walls of this rough, roughly triangular room are filled with floor-to-ceiling floor bookshelves. Hundreds of books and scrolls were thrown free of their resting place when the city crashed, and now cover the floor. Time and bitter cold have not been kind to them. Hmm. Uh, look through the pile to see if there's any that appear to have withstood the tests of time far better than the others. Um, yeah, so you dig through the piles, um, let's see what you find. Oh no, this one's broken too. Scroll firewall. <laughs> 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 Uh, you find uh, a scroll, a brittle tome with a black eight-pointed star on the front cover that seems more intact than anything else around it. Um, and you also find a key, an adamantine key. Ooh. I will gather these up um, and dutifully... Uh, transfer them over to our mage in the group who has uttered the magical phrase BRB. <laughs> <laughs> and Elena, do you have to take off? Or are you no, good for. Uh, probably in a bit. Okay. I was going to say, I don't know if this is a good spot for us to call it for the evening or not. Um, probably go a few minutes longer. I don't think there are any immediate threats that are going to drag it out. Okay. But yeah, I'll relay the, uh, the book and scroll over to Viltrum. Check out the doors down here. See if I notice anything out of the ordinary with them. Oh, nothing particular. Other than they do seem locked. Use the adamantium key. The Let's doors unlock. Oh no. You find yourself on a small balcony. Oh. Nice. Enjoying the night air. Is, is this it out here? It's all dark. Um, it, it overlooks the city, but as you're as you're talking out there, you notice your voices are incredibly loud. Like, it's echoing, or... How so? Uh, like, loud enough to be heard throughout the city. Ooh. I think this is the location for us to make announcements. I'm gonna step back inside. Is there anything we should make an announcement about? Uh, 
Viltrum has a funny butt. Well, funny, I don't know if that's going to really uh, be something we should announce to everybody here. Hmm. Beyond that, I'm completely unclear as to anything about this place. I truly feel that our friend Biltrum is much better equipped for figuring any of this out than we are. Yes, yes, I... Unfortunately, he seems to be quite, uh, stunned by the stars there. Well, they are rather pretty. And Wayfo mm -hmm. will find one of the chairs to sit down on and kind of doodle his thumbs while he looks up at them. Hey, I'm back. Sorry. Hey, welcome back. D. Um, so if nothing monumentous has occurred yet, I was just going to, before we move on, roll an arcana check to see what the purpose of the uh, constellation is. Uh, yeah, so you take a look at the... Uh, uh, the field of stars. Um, and yeah, with especially a roll like that, you notice something peculiar. Um, there is a dark star in a location in this star field amongst all the constellations you recognize, where you don't know a star to be. Interesting. Oh, wondering if this is some kind of uh, end map, maybe, or um, uh, setting of a hidden uh, object in the sky, perhaps. Guys, does anybody... Uh, know of there being a um, black star in this constellation anywhere? <laughs> well, there, the there is also the uh, the book and the scroll that Wayfo found and handed over to Biltrum while he was um, AFK. Yes. What do those say? Um, uh, the uh, scroll uh, seems to be a scroll of the comet. Um... Let me see if I have... Uh, somewhere here, maybe... Yeah. Um, one of them is a scroll of a comet. Um, it basically allows you to uh, summon a comet. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. All right. <laughs> uh, when you read the scroll, you cause a comet to 
uh, fall from the sky and crash into the ground at a point you can see up to a mile away from you. You must be outdoors when you use the scroll, or nothing happens when the scroll is wasted. It creates a 50 foot deep, uh, 500 foot radius crater on impact. Any creature <laughs> in that radius must make a DC 20 dex save, or take 30 d10 force damage. May, I, may I may I just make one comment here? Mm -hmm. We should possibly. I'm not saying we have to, but we should possibly save that for the next tavern we find. <laughs> for the next tavern? <laughs> Oddly specific, but I'm open. Because, you know, we haven't burned down the tavern in, like, forever. Wow. So, <laughs> smashing one to bits with a comet, however. That's come on. new. Yeah, Seems pretty that's, enticing, that's next huh? level shit right there. Yeah, that's um, man, that's certainly on a scale that I would not uh, have expected to be able to destroy taverns with. So, what I mean, better way to end a campaign <laughs> than with actual war crimes? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do you see this five hundred foot wide puddle? This is where our tavern used to be. <laughs> Indeed, this is, this is where most of the town used to be. This is where I put my tavern, if I had one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, the tavern keeper survives. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> running errands to get more drink and then, and then it hit. <laughs> God damn. All right, well, that's cool. I'll, I'll keep that. We'll, we'll find a good time for that. Yeah, I've thrown that in your inventory. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> and then um, there was a book that uh, he found as well. Uh, yes, a, a black tome uh, with an eight-pointed star on its front cover. Um, uh, it, as you skim through it partially with the help of uh, Professor Scan because some of it's in Draconic um, it seems to be various meetings of uh, the Wizards of the Ebon Star mm. um, we find one passage in particular that explains uh, that Master Iriolithus uh, opens the door to his study when uh, three or more uh, who are empowered by the arcane are seated uh, uh, in the chamber of the Ebon Star. Huh. Well, there I, you go. Oh, well, yeah, share that information with the party. I mean, you are arcane imbued you could sit jenkins you're sort of arcanishly imbued well, i also sure. wonder if if everyone that has access or has attuned to the um Ethrin mythal art will count as people that sit at the streets totally possible Maybe we should all just sit i think so I think there's, total, there's a it. total of eight chairs, and I'm pretty sure only eight people can be attuned to the device, so that makes sense. Well, Tora and Jenkins are, are like, taking up two freaking chairs apiece. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. Good for All you right. picking, picking the perfectly balanced chair. I can't sit on top of this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. I needed one for my ego as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you guys take some seats around uh, the uh, Field of Stars for, and you just sit there for a couple minutes. Nothing seems to happen. Uh, and then something well, does happen. Uh, you see a arcane gate appear within the, the Field of Stars before you. Ooh. Ooh. An arcane gate, you say? 
It's a gate of arcaneness. Yeah. Who knows what arcane wonders could be through that arcane gate? I'm gonna yeah, arcane go through that gate. Sorry, I, I will remember. mundanely go through the arcane gate. I'm going to gate arcanely over here. You're gonna gate into the arcane. But will your uh -oh. gate be arcane? Have a seizure while I'm doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> or will your gate be normal, or perhaps just a long stride? I, yeah, who knows at this point, honestly. Oh, oh no. Uh, so... I got bitches, kill them! <laughs> uh, you is guys it too late to take anything? it back? Yes, yes, it is too late. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> you step through the gate and you find yourself in a large chamber that has lain undisturbed for centuries. On the upper level, all around you, are tables uh, covered with wizardly paraphernalia. Soft groaning sound emanates from a shadowy door-sized rectangle along the curved northern wall. Uh, staircases to the east and west descend to the lower part of the room, where a sunken library is situated in a 20-foot wide, 10-foot deep circular pit. A ladder running along the circular track inside this hole allows for easy access to the many books and scrolls on its shelves. So basically, we're kind of surrounded by books right now. Uh, yeah, this actually should be the other way around here. Oh, okay. He's surrounded by books. Gotcha. Books. Uh, yeah, books. Books. on the edge of the pit are three aberrant creatures, each one staring at you with a singular hideous eye. And floating above the middle of the pit is a human skull with a wispy arcane symbols foaming or forming above it. He's figured out how to master the Matrix. And I think this is where we'll end for this week. Oh boy. Nice. That's a good build up. It's good. It's not a bad place to stop there. Mm hmm. It's a good place for us to die. <laughs> it's a good day to die. Right. Perhaps Never today Sunday. is a good day to die. Yeah, right. Right, right guys, speed! We're going to go ahead and end here, and we just won't go ahead and won't pick it up again, because yeah. um, you need to be a level uh, 15 to beat this enemy, and uh, you're not, so... You all get wiped. <laughs> we'll pick it up next week with a new carry. With a new yeah, we'll, st we'll start a new campaign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fight is physically impossible to win for you guys. Uh, you did your best. <laughs> the Alarthus shouts, you activated my trap card, and you all spontaneously combust, and then, uh... It's over. Six so. fireballs hit that one area instantaneously. So and that was the end of that. Sometimes that's just the way it goes, you know? Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, that was a good one. Good, uh... Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good, good round with that. Yeah, yeah, seriously round through the tunnels and uh battling the uh strangeness really indeed get to see if we have enough uh enough metal to defeat this uh spooky main spooky he wants man. to be he wants to be friends looking into his bony eye holes <laughs> I don't i don't i can't tell I don't think so. I don't think he wants to be oh, friends. You you leave your hands off my eye holes. These these eye holes are all mine. Yeah, yeah. Nobody better <laughs> touch my eye holes. <laughs> oh, Rick and Morty. Hey, who's around me right now? Who's around me? <sighs> um. I also was going to say that it seemed important when the thought popped into my head, but now I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, don't forget we need to try and find that staff. Yeah. Because that one guy was asking for it. He seems pretty chill, so. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm chill, but still evil creepy. Yeah. yeah. We'll, just, you know. we'll just bring it down there, and we'll just give him an ultimatum. You know, you tell us what you want it for, we won't give it to you. And then when he ultimately decides to try and fight us for it, because it's right in front of him, and we're tempting him, then we can kill him and be justified. <laughs> I see. Murder hobo lawyer. I like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
So you gotta you gotta freaking gaslight people sometimes to get what you want, you know. <laughs> oh, you don't have to tell Groot that. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that was the sickest character. Good lord. <laughs>